Hello, everyone. I am Asta Berry, and the zest that you're witnessing this instance will be your host this evening. I'm joined with Abhimanyu Singh, and we are the executive members of Team Spec. So, hi, guys. Hello, everyone. Are you excited for today's workshop? Let us know in the chat box and like as we see the participants are increasing so we can wait for a few time so that more participants join. Yes, like they are all excited. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, I can see that through the chat. Okay. So, like, any one of you guys, do you know about Pratik Narang, sir? Yes, yes, enthusiastically waiting. <laughs> so, like, Asta, like, sir, yes. both interested in the workshop. Yes, absolutely. Everybody is, like, super and also it's like, Yeah, and also it's, like, the first workshop of Electrothon. Yes. Okay, okay. I guess like we can start as uh, like the participation is increasing, so we can start with the presentation. SPEC or Society for Promotion of Electronic Culture was created under the patronage of NIT Hamirpur with its core purpose to foster technological innovation and excellence for the benefit of humanity. Under capable, capable leadership, any organization can flourish to its full potential, such as the backbone of SPEC, where the leaders set their agendas aside and invest in collective vision to help it become a success story. So, first and foremost, we would like to extend our heartiest gratitude to our director, Professor Hirala, Hiralal Murlidhar Suryavanshi, for building a holistic environment to hold this iteration of Electrothon. With the constant guidance of departmental faculty in charge, Dr. Dharmendra Singh Yadav Sir, and head of department, Dr. Gargi Khanna Ma'am, we are able to provide a progressive and encouraging environment for the Electrothon participants. A special thanks to our president, Yuvraj Karil Sir, and vice president, Yash Gupta Sir. We have been able to set new heights for Electrothon 4.0. Predicting the future is not magic, it is technology. To spread this temperament in a student and to cater to the needs of their inquisite nature, we are conducting a worldwide hackathon known as Electrothon. This being said, we assure you that you are going to have a wonderful time today because we have an amazing personality lined up for you. First of all, I would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you for our first workshop of Electrothon 4.0. Well, we all love video games. Like we pl love playing video games on our mobiles, laptops, tablets, and every other device. Don't we? We'll be fooling ourselves if we say no. So get ready to learn how to build a web game using programming fundamentals with none other than Pratik Narang. Pratik Narang is a name that every new budding coder surely knows. I bet all of you know who is Pratik Narang. Like he is a popular programming instructor and an ace software engineer, having worked with Google in the past, currently working with a scaler, and of course, created coding minutes. He is fondly also called as Pratik Bhaya by his students. Now, whether you want to uncover the secrets of the universe, or you want to pursue a career in 21st century, basic computer programming is an essential skill to learn. As a professional coding instructor, he has brought quality coding education and online courses to students at their doorsteps, making the entire process of learning seamless and fun. Programming is the current language of creativity. 
सो लाइक वाई डू वी नीड टू रॉब आवर सेल्फ लाइक जब हमारे पास चांस है दैट वी कैन लर्न अ लैंग्वेज वी कैन क्रिएट अ टेक्नोलॉजी विथ इट देन वाई जस्ट वी नीड टू बी द ओनली द कंज्यूमर ऑफ इट सो विद प्रतीक नारंग एज योर इंस्ट्रक्टर यू फॉल इन लव विद प्रोग्रामिंग बिकॉज ऑफ इज अमेजिंग एंड सिंप्लीफाइड एक्सप्लेनेशन फॉर एवरी टॉपिक ही इज एन एंटरप्रेन्योर अ कोडर अ टीचर एंड अ ट्रैवलर to sum up he is simply someone you can look up to and get inspired i'm sure unka interactive javascript resume to sabne dekha hoga i mean it's quite popular among the student community i personally love it on the top of all of that he's someone so deep into empowering students careers and mentoring them with immense care and love honestly he's a teacher every student yearns for As an embodiment of success, he has left no stone unturned. And now it's time we get to know more about him and what we have to tell about the world of technology. We would like to call Pratik Bhaiya on stage now to conduct the much-awaited workshop. And sir, we are glad to have you back here with us after the last time we took our workshop in the campus itself. And surely the time flies. We are now online. Yeah, hi everyone, and thanks Abhimanyu and Asta for uh, such nice introduction and lot of compliments. So probably one of the best introduction I have ever heard. Uh, uh, good to see you, but maybe I uh, wish we could uh, meet offline as well. Uh, colleges are opening up. Maybe we can come in future too. And uh, yeah, it's been long time. I'm coming to NIT Hamirpur uh, after COVID. Like I came uh, around two years back. and this time uh, there is a new digital medium so which we are going to reach reach you all and uh, uh, just one question how do i see the chats uh, like the students are sending some messages uh, i am not able to uh, see them so if like any doubt will be there we will pop it on our screen and you can yes. read it from there okay or maybe just put it in the private chat itself yes yeah, sure okay sir. sir sure sure sir right so uh, great so good to see you all and uh, uh who is the target audience like a lot of first year students are there so yes, first so year students first... second year students first... okay great 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 so it's good to know uh, maybe a lot of you are stepping into the world of programming and might be struggling with some basics as well someone might be doing very good as well so today's session i uh, planned in mind that we will do something visual okay like most of times you start coding in c++ or java but you kind of get bored with that black terminal screen yaar we are not building something so today we are going to build something a very simple game and we will not use very hi fi concept we'll just focus on the basic and we'll try to build a simple game okay and uh, you as uh, asa said you might have seen my resume if not i can just show it to you uh, and because it's in the form of a game and today's topic is also a game maybe some of you might get inspired So, sure sir uh, let me just uh, go through that as well right uh yeah uh i think screen is visible uh yeah you can yeah, share screen uh, okay it's visible now yes sir it's visible yes, sir. So yeah, uh, this is my uh, resume that I built in my college days. It's it's now uh, pretty old for me, and I've not updated it for some time now. I did my B Tech from D to U, uh, learned some of the programming skills while in the college. So interesting thing was I did not had computer science in my school. So first year was a complete like uh, everything went over the head for me in programming. It was actually in the second year I started learning programming languages. Started with C, C plus plus. Third year, explored little bit about web development, but fortunately, I was lucky enough to uh, crack some hackathons and some got some internships. So, starting uh, first internship I got in my second year uh, in in a good gaon based startup, and then through Compass, I got internship at Sandisk, which I also got uh, a pre-placement offer. but i did not join i uh, ended up joining coding blocks which i co-founded uh, with the other team members and from till then i have been teaching programming uh, last year uh, like in november 2020 i also joined google uh, which i left couple of months back some of the projects i did in the college and so this resume is not up to date in the last year in the middle of pandemic i co-founded uh, coding minutes which brings high quality uh, programming courses to college students 
and all of our courses they come without support and they cost less than a visa so till now in the last 10 months we did create uh, 10 courses and all of them they are hosted uh i guess there is some network issue yeah, yeah there's yeah. some network lag so like guys as you all can see ki like how much pratigya has achieved and how much motivating he is like seeing he has done all of this stuff creating coding minutes and all yes if you're yes, having any doubt uh yes yes sir yeah. building quality content for the students and like a lot of students have benefited immensely uh, so that makes me feel good that i was able to create some impact in in the lives of people so that's a satisfying thing being being as a teacher okay so today we are with you hopefully you will also get to learn something new and uh, that might ignite some more interest for some of you in the programming because we are going to build a game so uh, uh, how many of you have never programmed before or maybe if you have done little bit of coding then this session would be more relevant for you uh, if you are an absolute beginner you can still grasp the high level ideas uh, that what we are going to do so i'm going to assume that uh, are people familiar with the variables uh, data types loops functions uh, maybe a quick answer in the chat would be helpful for me uh yes so you can see the comments in like yes. in private chat near okay. private chat a new column is created okay i uh, i'm not able to see comments as well right yes great yes okay uh wow bhaiya yeah. <laughs> great great okay yes 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 great great you are familiar with these basics great that means you have already started learning programming so what we'll do is uh, we'll try to build a game maybe uh, not as i think there's again a network issue yeah so guys we'll you can for sir to join back yeah by the time you can just write in the chat if you feel down okay uh, yeah yeah so uh, is my internet uh, making some trouble uh yes sir yes. <laughs> like okay. lag is so let me know if, if it happens again uh, i will switch to a different network okay okay sir sure uh all right <laughs> sir pc tod do nahi bhai <laughs> <laughs> तोड़ने से क्या होगा <laughs> तो मे बी यू यू माइट हैव स्टार्टेड विद सम प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेज लाइक सी प्लस प्लस जावा पाइथन वॉट एवर इट डज नॉट मैटर ओके बट वॉट टूडे वी आर विंग टू डू एस वी आर विंग टू बिल्ड अ वेब गेम ओके सो अ वेब गेम नीड्स अ ब्राउजर टू रन ओके सो यू नीड अ ब्राउजर वेयर यू कैन रन योर गेम सो मे बी फायर फॉक्स थ्रोम एनी ब्राउजर विल डू एंड यू नीड some editor where you can write the code okay so any text editor will do so you can use sublime or you can use atom or any any text editor okay so currently i have atom in my system so i will be using atom for building this game okay so now who will tell me what is uh, uh, what are the programming languages that you need to maybe build a website or or a web page a any editor okay so what what is the language of web so have you ever built a web page right html css okay uh, html is is uh, stands for hypertext markup language but it's not a programming language okay so what html does it do gives you structure to the page okay what components would be there it kind of gives you a structure on the page okay and you might have heard about css right what does css do what does css do right 
So CSS gives you styling on the page, right? So maybe you want to give certain colors or maybe you want to give certain borders. So you can beautify your web page using CSS. And there is one more language that we need to know that is JS, okay? So it is okay if you don't know JavaScript, we'll go through the basics of HTML, CSS, JS first, and then we will dive into the game development thing, okay? So JS actually gives you the functionality. Okay, functionality means any logic that you want to do, right? That can be done using JavaScript. So we'll go through the fundamentals of HTML, CSS in maybe short 10 minutes, and then we will uh, come into the uh, concept of game. Okay, so what we are going to do, we are going to build a very simple game. Okay, so uh, let me just tell you about the concept of a game. So there is maybe some uh, treasure. Okay, and there is some player here. And maybe there is there is an enemy which is going up and down, right? And the player wants to reach the treasure, okay? So maybe we have some entities in the game. So player is kind of an object in the game. Enemy is an object in the game, okay? And uh, treasure is, is, is a fixed object in the game, okay? So player wants... Okay, I just uh, changed the, my internet. Now I'm connected to a phone hot, hotspot, okay? Okay, so sir. It should be okay now. It should be okay now. Uh, yes, I did change my network. Great. Uh, so what we are going to do, we are going to uh, maybe start building a web page, okay? So I'm, I've also created a link from where you can uh, download the images and stuff that uh, we can uh, use in our game. So I will just share that as well, right? Okay. So we, we are going to build a kind of a very simple game as well, okay? So maybe uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with Atom and I have created a folder where I have game session. You can uh, download some images. I do have some images which I have shared with you in the link. So we will be using some of these images as background in our game or objects in our game. Okay. So what I will do, I'll first uh, create a simple HTML file. Let me just call it as a uh, practice.html. So we are not going to start building the game right now. We are just going to see how to write a code of uh, how to write HTML, CSS and JS code. So to give you a quick heads up, okay? It, it will give you a quick heads up or a quick revision of these concepts, okay? So first of all, whenever you want to build a web page, you need to start with the HTML tag. And the HTML does have a head and it does have a body, right? And maybe you can give some title to the page. So maybe uh, practice. Let's say that is the title of the page. Every tag has an opening and a closing bracket. And maybe you can write something here, okay? Maybe uh, some paragraph that this is our web page. That's it. So what we do, we do most of our work inside the body. So HTML has uh, like two units. One is the head and another is the body, right? So most of our work, it, it will go into the body body of uh, the page, okay? And maybe let us try to see uh, how does this page look like? So practice.html, uh, okay? So this is in the folder, uh, game session, and maybe I'm just going to open up in, in my browser, right? So you see a very simple 
web page that this is our web page okay so that means we have built a very simple web page and this only displays a message that this is our web page right now what i'm going to do i'm not going to uh, dive into a lot of details of html but uh, i'm also going to show you that how you can uh, create something on which you will render the game right so html gives us something which is known as canvas so have you heard about this term canvas so we want we want uh, to draw our game right on on some screen so html gives us a drawing board on which we can render our images or we on which we can uh, draw objects and we can update them right so all of them uh, all these things it happens to something which is known as canvas so we'll we'll come to the canvas very soon but before that maybe uh, what we can do is uh, i can also show you some uh idea of css right so css can be defined in style tag and that goes inside it now suppose you want to select this paragraph and you want to make this blue so maybe you can say select this paragraph and i want to give it a color that is blue so if i now go and reload my page it actually appears in blue color okay so this is a very simple example of putting a css property on a paragraph object that we have created okay i am no okay so mo most of our uh, work will will be uh, with javascript it, it we will not be working with html and css so much so i'm just giving you a brief introduction of uh, how do we create the structure and how do we do the styling right how do we do the styling so style tag is used to specify the css okay maybe you want to make uh, maybe you want to increase the font size maybe you can say okay i want a bigger size so maybe font size is 14 pixels now it it, it actually reduces right you can uh, specify different things like the font size or the color or di all different properties right now what we will do we'll actually focus more on the logic part than on anything else okay so i have given you a brief idea of uh, html uh, css the main uh, agenda of the session will revolve around the functionality of the game and we will do most of the stuff using javascript okay so let us try to uh, learn how do we write some basic code with javascript okay so let's try to uh, write some basic code with js so if you want to write js code inside your uh, web page itself you want to add some uh, functionality what you will do you will use a script tag and inside your script tag all your logic will go here okay so now let's see how do we create a variable okay let's see how do we uh, create a variable and how do we work with it so maybe i can say i want to uh, create a bucket a and that holds the value 10 so this is what we are doing we are creating a variable right okay so now if i run this code you will not see anything right because uh, this is not displayed on the page but in the memory of the browser there is a bucket that is created and it does have a value that is assigned as 10 right so if you want to see what variables have been created uh, behind this web page so you go to uh, uh, inspect okay and then go to the console tab and here you try to write a particular variable maybe you want to say a right now if i print a so what you can see is the value of a is actually 10 right maybe i create a dog maybe variable dog name and let's call it as let's say bruto let's say okay and if i see here uh, i have to reload the page and if i say okay tell me the dog name okay so now you can see the dog name is actually bruto so let me know are you able to understand these concepts so from this point we are working with a programming language
we are working with a programming language that we call as JavaScript. Okay. Now you may ask, uh, why do we need these variables? Okay. Why do we need these variables? So can you think of any example when you are going to build a game where you might require to store some data? Let's say we are building this game where we have a player. There is an enemy which is moving up and down and there is some treasure. Where do we need these variables? Where do we need to store this data? Who will tell me? Why, why do I need to store data and where? Okay, score can be a variable. Very good thing. Score can be a variable. Maybe the more you move, the more is your score. What else? What else needs storage of data? So maybe the positions, right? X, Y coordinates of the player, where the player currently is, okay? Where the enemy currently is. You might uh, require to store the coordinates of the player, the coordinates of the enemy, the coordinates of the treasure, the positions, right? So all, all that, that data uh, will be in the form of variables, okay? And maybe I want to load some image corresponding to a player. So maybe image name could also be a variable, right? I, I might have some image that is some URL from where we have to load this image, right? So that also can be a variable, right? So we will, uh, we will be needing variables to store the state of the objects in the game, right? So getting this point, we will need variables to store some information about our player enemy or, or the object. Okay. okay. What else you have learned in a programming language? So have you learned about loops? Maybe you want to print some numbers. Maybe you want to do something again and again, right? So maybe you can say for int i equal to zero, i less than let's say five, i plus plus. Maybe I want to print something on the screen, not on the web page, but on the console. So there is a print statement, which we call as console.log. Okay. So what is console? Console is actually this part. This, this part is console. Okay. It's not the web page. So maybe I want to display something here when this page loads. So maybe I want to say, okay, display the number I. So if I now, uh, sorry, not int, but bar, sorry. When I reload this page, you can see I'm getting output zero, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So this is how you actually write a loop inside JS. Okay. This is how you actually write a loop inside JS. Okay. Uh, we do have something which is known as an array. So have you ever worked with an array? What is an array? Who will tell me? What is an array? Who will tell me? So if you want to store a collection of objects, okay, you might require an array. For example, you have a lot of dogs, maybe uh, Cruto, Bruto, Lido, right? So they are actually dogs and what I, you can do the, now is maybe you want to see what dogs are there. So maybe you print dogs. So what you get, you actually get a list of dogs. Okay. So if you want to store multiple entries, you, you uh, can create an array kind of an object. And that is basically it, it, uh, everything is written inside square brackets. Okay. You can also iterate over it. You can add new dog into it. For example, you can say dogs dot uh, push. Maybe I want to add a new dog, maybe uh, Cody. Okay. And if I now see what dogs object is, so it, it does contain four dogs. Maybe I want to remove a dog. So I can say dogs dot pop. So it is going to remove the last dog, right? JavaScript, it does provide you functionality uh, like other languages. It provides you with variables, arrays, loops, and you can also create functions. Okay. So have you ever worked with functions? Any function you have created in your life? Tell me. Come on, come on.
maybe let's try to create a very simple function which prints maybe uh, function greet okay and maybe you accept let uh, maybe var college or maybe let's keep a very simple function which says hi everyone so maybe console dot log hi everyone right so now this output will not be printed unless you call the function so i want to call the function greet so it will execute and it will print what what is written inside this function okay so it's a bunch of statements which are uh, grouped together inside a block okay so functions are blocks of co code which execute when they are called okay they are not uh, they will not execute unless they are not called okay maybe you want to call this function every time so we can also write it in the code here that okay we will create a function and we will call it maybe i call it two times so i will see this output two times okay so i see hi everyone and i see hi everyone okay so that is what the function is so you can define your own uh, block of code right okay what else you have seen so have you uh, ever worked with a conditional statement have you ever worked with if else come on tell me yes okay so if else is used when you have some conditional code right maybe you want to do something under a certain condition right so maybe you have some pocket money let's say uh, var pocket money this is let's say 10 if pocket money is let's say greater than 5 maybe you can say console dot log let's i chips okay else maybe console dot log no money maybe something like that so now what is going to happen uh we have pocket money greater than 10 so it's going to print let's buy chips something like this right so if else is used when you have conditional code you want to do something under a condition and if will execute if the condition is true otherwise the condition is false right okay so one last thing that i will cover in basics of javascript is that uh, you can also create objects okay now suppose in my game i i want to sir game kaise banega yes we, we are coming to it iske baad hum game banayenge theek hai and we will use all these concepts to build the game right suppose you are building a game where you have a bird okay and the bird is flying at a certain coordinate and maybe if the bird has some properties maybe the bird has some power as well right so what you want to do is maybe you want to create a lot of variables which are associated with the bird yes or no maybe you want to say bird has a x which is 10 bird has a y which is 20 maybe bird has a color which is let's say red okay maybe bird has some power which is let's say 50 okay now what is, what the thing is when you write a uh, code like these so all of them they are different variables okay all of them they are different variables but they belong to one object do you agree they do belong to one object so what we can do is instead of having this uh, variables scattered in like different buckets what we can do is we can create an object bird and we we can define all these uh, variables as properties of those objects okay for example you have a paint brush right so paint brush might have a color it might have a thickness it might have a size okay so we don't want to do programming in this particular style we actually want to create a bird object okay and we'll wrap everything inside the bird object so maybe i can say var bird and this is actually an object okay so this is how you create an object so you uh, this is a json object okay we are going to define the yes so we can define um, the bird has a x coordinate which is let's say 10 the bird has a y coordinate that is 20 the bird has a color that is let's say blue the bird has a power that is let's say 
hundred. Uh, okay. Now, if I show you what this bird is, uh, okay. So we are in the console, and if I show you what is bird, so you can see bird is actually an object which has the following properties. Okay. And now, since it, it is a bird, it can also have a behavior. Okay. So objects can have some state. They can also have some behavior, right? So objects have some state and some behavior. So can you tell me one behavior that the bird can demonstrate? So behavior means any action that the bird can perform. What actions a bird can do? Who will tell me? Who will tell me? Maybe bird can fly, right? Bird can eat. Okay. So what we will say is that this bird has a function fly. So we say fly is actually a function, and you can say console dot log bird is flying, something like this. Okay. And maybe the bird can eat as well. So eat is a function. and you can say console dot log bird is eating now these functions will not run unless you call them right so maybe we have to show you how do we call them so maybe i have to say bird dot color so this gives me the uh, color of the bird so if i say bird dot fly this is actually a function so we need round brackets with it to see if the bird is flying i can say bird dot eat so you can see bird is eating so we are printing we are doing some work when we are calling the function functionality of that bird okay so now you can see that all of these uh, data members and functions they are wrapped inside a bird object so this is how we define an object in javascript so it is one of the ways of creating an object in javascript and uh, let me know if, if you have any doubts in understanding Uh, the bird object okay so with this we are done with the basics of js and we are ready to take step 2 that is building our first game so ashmit says bird can make sound very good very good so come on let me know if you have any doubts in any step why we are not using xs uh, specifiers uh so we have not created uh, the bird object in the traditional object oriented programming way using the concept of classes so it's a very simple style of creating objects which we call as javascript object notation okay so here we don't have actually uh, the class thing yet implemented okay so we are not going into that details right okay yes it, it is actually a json object yes it's a json object we have not used the classes and objects uh, thing here yes it's a json object okay so we are just creating one bird we are not creating a template for the bird no doubts all clear sentence is all clear what about everyone else okay uh so i'm just uh, making it beginner friendly okay if you want to scale your game and if you want to add so many birds then definitely you will make a bird class but right now i'm just trying to make easy things uh, things look easy for you right so as a beginner this is a good enough to understand the object okay what is the difference between a function and an object see a function is a bunch of lines of code which will run when it is executed whereas an object depicts a real world entity for example bird cannot be a function bird is not a functionality bird is actually an object and object has two things it it has some state okay that means uh, there is some state that means there is some data that is associated with that object and there is some behavior that means some actions that that object can do right so you have objects they combine data 
and the actions inside like one bucket okay so bird has a bird knows something about itself where i am flying what is my color what is my power and bird can perform certain actions like bird can fly bird can eat so th those are the methods inside the object okay so that is what we have all clear okay so i think uh, now we can go into building our game right so i will just uh, uh, start a new file okay so we don't need this code to build our game so what we will do we'll create a new file inside our game session and i will create a new file and maybe i will call it as index.html okay you can give it any name so again like every other web page we will need a head we will need sorry we'll need html tag we'll need head we'll need body and inside body we will build our game okay we will put our game logic here so maybe you can say title my first game okay so one thing i discussed this that html you need to create the structure of the game okay so we'll we'll create some uh, basic structure for our game so game will be rendered on a component that is known as canvas right so we have something which is known as html uh, canvas right so canvas is, is is like your drawing board where you can draw the game right so like paragraph is a tag or uh, h h1 is a tag where you maybe put our heading something like game game or something you also have a canvas tag okay and we can uh, close this tag as well right so now this canvas is the drawing board uh, where we will create our game right and we'll define some width of this canvas maybe the width is let's say uh 500 pixels and maybe some height let's say the height is around 400 pixels mm. so canvas is actually a tag which is internally an object for the browser okay so now we are creating a drawing board where we will create our game right we will paint we will do certain stuff right and let me show it to you in the browser so instead of doing practice.html i'm going to go in there so i actually don't see anything but if you do an inspect right and if you go to the code right uh here so this this is actually your canvas this is actually your canvas right so i am in the elements tab so elements tab show me the entire structure of a web page so if i open up google.com and if i go and inspect so i can see in the elements tab the entire uh, components of html which have been used to create this web page so in my case it is very simple i have only one component that is a canvas right and maybe we can increase uh, the size little bit maybe 1500 by maybe 800, 800 let's say so if i now click this canvas you can see it is taking a bigger area okay or maybe what you can do is you can define a styling you can say okay i want to give this canvas a border and uh, so that i can see where my canvas is So I can say border uh, one pixel solid orange, maybe something like that. Okay, so you can see there is there is some border around the canvas. This canvas will this canvas will contain your game. Okay, we'll we'll draw our game inside this canvas. Okay, maybe I can give a background color as well, maybe some green. 
let's see if we get it oh yes we do get a background color that is now green are you able to see it uh, can we make a div see a div you can make it but the thing is we need certain uh, certain functions of the canvas which are required to build a 2d game okay so the games they are rendered on a drawing board which is uh, in most cases it is only canvas okay so div is less powerful canvas is more powerful you can draw on canvas you can erase things on canvas this board also gives you a pen right so like i'm using a tablet it comes with a pen similarly the canvas also comes with a pen okay so next thing we will do is we'll create a pen using which we will render objects on this canvas okay but everything uh, since it is it is not static it is not fixed at one place we need some logic to update the player or we need some logic to update the enemy so who will tell me where i should create all this logic uh, should i create it using html or should i create it using css or should i use javascript where where should i do it where should i do it html css or js where should my game logic reside of course js okay so we we are done with the structure part now everything we will do it using javascript inclu including the creating of objects and stuff right now we have to uh, do entire work inside uh, javascript so here is the script tag and we'll do everything inside this part of the code okay so inside html this part is actually your css okay uh, which is known as uh, like on page css and in the script tag all your js code will go and all your functionality of the game it will go inside the script tag right it will go inside the script tag right all right so so before before we uh, start building our game right so let us think of a flow that we might follow to build our game right so what actually happens so when when, when you start a new game it takes some time to load the game right that is what happens so you load few objects in the memory before your game starts that means you create different objects so in our game what are the objects and they might have some initial positions as well okay the player is standing here the enemy is standing here the treasure is here okay so you will create initialize objects then what happens what happens when you play the game okay let's say uh you are uh, creating a game where there is a character and that is taking jumps so you continuously uh, look for inputs okay you continuously look for inputs from the user and whenever user gives some input your player moves forward okay they they do move right but we have to see from the angle of programmer what we have to do is we have to take input okay we have to take input and we have to update the state of the objects we have to do updates for example this player was at x equal to 0 and i pressed the right button now this player should come at x equal to 10 right so we have to do updates that means in the memory we have to update the coordinate of the player and we also have to redraw it okay we have to draw it again yes or no we have to draw the player at a new position yes or no okay and this will this will continue until the game is not over until the game is not over we will read the input we'll update it we'll draw it 
we'll update it we'll draw it updated it, droid it. so this thing is known as a game loop this thing is known as a game loop okay so let us try to uh, create a game loop in our code so maybe what i will do is i will create a function that is load game okay okay there is a function uh, update game there is a function draw game okay and uh, what else what else right and i need something uh i need to maybe start the game right i i need to start the game right or maybe for now let's just remove the load game and maybe let me call, create a function that i call as render okay so this render is actually going to be our game loop right so basically we want to repeat two things again and again we want to repeat update game and draw game again and again right so maybe i can say uh, control dot log we are in render okay and maybe i can say uh, update the game and draw the game or maybe you can first draw the game and then you can update that is also okay and here i am writing console dot log uh, inside update and here i say console dot log inside draw okay now do you think uh, will i get any output if i now uh, build run my page so now right now if i call the function render what you can see is so it says inside render inside draw and inside update so this function is getting called only once but we want this to go on forever okay we want this function to run continuously something like i want uh, once a frame is rendered i want it to render again right so what what would it would be do you know what it is called so when you call a function inside another function it's actually a recursive function now but we want to we would don't want to do it because what is going to happen is it will call the function at a very high speed okay it, it will call it very high speed that means it will call 1 million maybe uh, 10 power 6 calls in one second so maybe i can just show it to you so your program will can possibly crash if i call the function render okay okay i have not saved the code so if i call the function render so you can see it, it is getting called a lot of times right we don't want this uh, high speed now you can see maximum call stack size exceeded why this is happening so those who have studied recursion they might know this that whenever you call a function a new function is created in the memory and the memory might get full after some iterations render 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 okay okay so your memory can get actually full after some number of calls so the processor is capable of making 1 million calls in one second okay and we don't want to we don't want to uh, render it 1 million times in one second so generally you have you might have seen the games have a frame rate okay they have a frame rate like 30 fps or 60 fps 60 frames per second okay 
and it also means that see what is happening is so when you use recursion and you are going ahead suppose your player was at x equal to 0 then it was at x equal to 1 then it was x equal to 2 you don't need to store the previous state right you don't need to store the previous state but with recursion you are storing everything in the stack you don't want to do it okay so recursion is not the right thing to do here because one thing is it is making a lot of calls and second thing is it is storing data in every call so we just want this function to run periodically we don't want it to be a recursive function we want it to be a periodic function okay that means a function that gets gets a call after some period of time okay so we want a periodic function maybe that runs 60 times in one second so for that the browser uh provides us a method which is known as window dot request animation frame okay and this method accepts what function you want to call again right so we will will use this and it is automatically going to call this function periodically maybe 60 times in one second and that will solve our game okay we don't want a recursive function so maybe we'll call render and now if i show you the code so it is still it is still rendering but the speed is not that fast and it will not give you the memory overflow because it is not making a call stack okay so you can see it is getting called again inside draw inside update it's a periodic function okay uh, how to decide what fps will be great for our game so you let uh, this method to decide so generally it is between i think 30 to 60 fps so this method automatically decides uh, according to the available power of the system okay so this is going to do it uh, automatically right so now we have a function where we are uh, rendering something okay now what we will do is uh even you can ignore these functions right so you can just say we are in render and i want to call this function repeatedly okay so now if i show you uh, so you can see uh, this number it is actually telling me how many times the render function is getting called so maybe it is very simple so it is running 60 times per second or higher okay what is the need of graphic cards in designing the game right so graphic cards is important uh, so that see when when you are rend rendering the images on the screen right so it consumes lot of power and also when you are uh, working with like intensive games right so there is lot of computations that are happening means lot of calculations so lot of objects are interacting so you need to check for collisions okay and so on so so in order to speed up the process of uh, uh like running the game right so it is a cpu intensive task so graphic cards helps you to increase the power of your cpu right it is optimized for doing a lot of calculations in one second right? so we'll do some calculations in our game as well so let me start with uh, by defining something maybe i can create some uh maybe some initial initialize game function and maybe we can or maybe we can do it directly as well just to keep the things more simpler maybe i want to create a box okay okay let us first try to learn something maybe i want to draw something on this canvas right i maybe want to draw a box on the canvas okay so let's see how we can do it let's see how we can do it so in order to draw something on the box uh, on the canvas you first need the canvas okay and you also need a pen right so what we will do so this canvas is currently known only to the html the javascript does not know anything about this canvas object okay it does not know anything about the canvas object so you have to bring the html ob object into your javascript okay so how you, how you bring it so you say uh 
there is a document object that is available inside javascript and you can say okay get element by id so maybe i define it some id for this canvas and i say my canvas i want to get this object inside my javascript code so that i can work with it right so yes it's a query selector so i'm trying to get this my canvas here and maybe i create a variable canvas and maybe i i can show you what this canvas is going to be so maybe i say canvas okay we got some error canvas oh there is a spelling mistake i think can was so it is actually the canvas object that we created in html it is now available to javascript so js can work with this object so let me know if you have any doubts so this comes under the topic called as dom manipulation so the html page is a kind of a document object model where you have multiple objects canvas is an object and we are fetching that object inside the js code so that we can work with it okay so now this object has a method that gives you the pen okay so the method is known as get context get context and you pass a parameter called 2d okay so now you also got a pen so if i show you what is canvas this is your canvas that we are getting what is pen so it is a canvas rendering context 2d it's actually an object it's actually an object okay why we are not using separate js file we can do it we can do it okay so you can move uh, ideally we should do it but just to make things simpler for you i'm just doing it in one file okay what is dom model so dom model is actually uh, so when you load a web page right so all the elements that you see they are part of a common parent uh, which is known as like window right i think window so window has a document document has your head body and all that stuff right so so document object model so your html is a document which is made up of different objects like uh, head is a object meta tag is a object so all these tags they are kind of objects itself so canvas is also an object okay so we got the pen right so maybe what we can do is we can try to draw something using the pen let us try to draw something using the pen right so right now i'm not using the update and draw function but we will use it little later on so maybe you can just comment it out okay so we have just commented it out we are not using it and what i can do is i can draw something using this pen right there is a method called fill rectangle that is with the pen and maybe you can specify some coordinates let's say 10 10 30 30 and you maybe give some color that is uh, maybe red oh not like this that is not required but let's see if we get something so what you can see is that there is a box that has been drawn right at 10 10 comma 10 and uh which has a width and height of 30 30 so if i increase it to maybe 300 300 you will see a larger rectangle okay it's actually very large maybe 50 50 so starting from 10 comma 10 we are drawing a rectangle which has 50 length and 50 height or maybe you say 80 length and 50 height so like this this is actually a rectangle right okay so what i want to do is i maybe want to do uh, draw it in the middle of the game so that it, it it will later become an enemy right 
so can i say that i have a enemy which has some x coordinate which is let's say uh, our game length is 1000 so maybe it is in the middle which is at 500 it has some y coordinate let's say that is 150 it has some width that is let's say 100 it has some height that is also 100 let's say okay so now instead of drawing the rectangle i will draw my enemy so can i say x y w and h basically the same thing we are putting it inside a enemy object so enemy dot x enemy dot y enemy dot width and enemy dot height so fill rectangle is a method that is provided to us with the pen object so it's a behavior of the pen so now if you see we have drawn a rectangle here okay so you may ask how do we change the color okay i don't want a black rectangle i maybe want a, green, a blue rectangle okay so there is a method called pen dot i think fill style and you can see set it as blue you can say i want the color of this pen to be blue i don't want this to be red or oh, to be black or maybe you put it as red so now it it gets a red color okay or what you can say that enemy has a property color and you put this property as red and you say okay when drawing the enemy i want to change the color of my pen which is equal to enemy dot color that is also what something that you can do so it will give you a red enemy something like this any any doubts so far come on come on tell me and any doubts you have so what is the next thing that we should do so fill style is actually a property of the pen right it it is the data that pen knows about itself so pen is uh, is a object that we have created using this uh, canvas dot get context 2d method and we are saying it so pen has some information about the color and that color is set through a property called fill style okay no doubts so what is the next thing that we should do so should we add movement to this yes okay we should add movement to it okay so maybe the movement might happen something like this so inside the update game method i want to say that every time you call the update function you increment the y coordinate of the enemy by a factor of 10 okay let's see what happens uh okay so right now nothing is happening why because we have not made a call to the update function so where we should call the update function where we should call the update function in what what function who will tell me so inside the render function we should say update the game okay but still nothing is happening why nothing is happening why we are just updating the coordinate we are not telling the pen to draw draw it, it at that particular coordinate okay so this drawing is happening only once okay but we want to draw it again and again okay so we will just move this code from outside the loop where we were just doing an initialization okay this part is only for initializing the game so the part that we want to repeat should be part of draw we want to draw the enemy again and again okay so now let us run this mm. okay we have not called the method draw game that should also be called inside the render and now if i run this code you can this this is happening so can anyone explain why this is happening 
what is the reason of this behavior we wanted this box to move down but it it became elongated why it might be happening who will tell me clear the previous frame very good asmit very good so we are not clearing the previous frame so what we actually had is we had something here and then we said okay increment the y coordinate okay so this is your positive y axis and this is your positive x axis uh, in case of computer graphics okay so we are saying that okay y coordinate was 100 now make it as 1 110 so we drew over the previous frame we have not cleared the previous frame okay so now what we have to do is we have to clear everything okay we have to clear the previous frame so inside the draw method so we have we will clear the previous frame okay so we'll say uh so we'll say uh pen dot i think clear rectangle is the method so starting from 0 0 fill the game dimensions okay so so game is 1000 by 800 so maybe i can say uh where game height is 1000 and uh, game width is uh, 800 uh height is 800 okay and width is this much so the clear rectangle is going to accept how much area we want to clear so game width and game height let's see if we are able to do it uh game w is not defined game width and height okay uh okay now we have an object that is going down right now we have an object that is going down so now you have to tell me how do we bring this back up i want this to oscillate between the two ends how should i do it how should i do it who will tell me come on come on i want us to oscillate between the two ends uh, where i should write the logic and what logic should i use revert the velocity okay reverse the loop so basically inside my update logic can i say that if enemy dot y uh exceeds the range of uh, the height of the game that is game dot game height then i say i will go back so enemy dot y equals enemy dot y minus 10 maybe okay but we don't want to do minus 10 okay so what will happen is it will get stuck so now again it is going beyond because see we want this block to stop here okay we want this block to stop here not go beyond the boundary so this coordinate y is actually game height minus this height which is the height of the block right so so game height minus uh the height of the enemy so enemy dot height okay we want to stop somewhere behavior now you can see it is actually getting stuck right why uh because we are saying okay you go 10 step back and again it will take 10 step forward so it will just oscillate between 10 steps maybe if i do it 200 then you you might see so something like this will happen right so maybe i want this to move in the opposite direction right i want this to move in the opposite direction so can you think of any strategy 
using which it can move so what i can do is that i can define a direction i can say speed is plus 5 so every time the enemy is moving the speed it will be incremented by the speed variable and if it touches the boundary right i will negate the speed i will say enemy dot speed equals enemy dot speed into minus 1 so yes we are going to negate the velocity right so let's let's see what happens now so it is going here it touches and it comes back right but now it uh, went beyond that boundary how do we handle that case okay so maybe i can say that we will reverse the velocity if this happens or that is where your logical operators comes in so or your enemy dot uh, y it becomes less than 0 less than equal to 0 so in both the cases i am going to negate the speed right like this now it is oscillating between the boundaries right so that is is actually your if else only right so we are saying that either it touches this border or it touches this border just reverse the direction of the velocity and the increment or decrement will happen into into that direction okay got it now this is not looking cool maybe i want to add some images as well right okay so i want this to uh, have some image as well so what i will do i will i will uh, draw enemy right i will draw an enemy here right uh so i have a assets folder inside that folder i have this enemy drowsy.png so we'll try to load it okay so we'll uh, try to create a image object so in the beginning where we are doing the initialization part we will load the enemy image which is of the type image and we will try to set the source of that so enemy dot source this is going to be assets and i think uh, drowsy dot png right loading the image well okay we are creating a image and we are telling that this is the url of this image right so in javascript everything can be where right uh equal to 0 okay equal to 0 is also okay right now i think uh uh what got stuck let me look into it see you you don't know what is what is going to be the exact coordinate it may happen that you were at 5 and you took a step and it became minus 5 so you want to come back right so something like this right okay e equal to 0 is also working but uh, less than equal to 0 is is a more safer case right it's more safe right equal to 0 is also working but uh, less than 0 is a more safe thing right suppose okay now it's clear great great so what we are trying to do is uh, we are trying to create a enemy image object and uh, dro wsy okay let's try to run this okay, the game is getting stuck cannot see properties of undefined setting source okay okay this is actually enemy image right so it's not enemy it's enemy image so enemy is not defined so that is why uh, we are getting an error now it is working fine okay so till now we have just loaded an image so if i just show you in the console that uh, 
maybe i should uh, not print the update uh, and the draw and maybe this is okay so if i show you enemy uh, so there is one object that is enemy and there is another object that is enemy image so it is actually a image tag itself it is actually the image tag itself okay so now why we we are not able to see the image because we have not drawn the image okay so inside the draw function we are using a fill fill rectangle function okay that actually creates a rectangle so i don't want to use the fill rectangle function i want to use pen dot i think the function is known as uh, draw image so everything will remain same and it will accept one more parameter which image you want to draw so i want to draw the enemy image so i have passed one more parameter here and it will draw the enemy image so now you actually have the enemy right that is moving up and down right yes or no okay so getting it so similarly now you have to create a player and and a trier okay so the function is not fill rectangle we don't want to fill the rectangle we want to draw the image right so now you have enemy which is already there now we have to create a player which will uh, work with your arrow keys okay we want a player to work with arrow keys so let's see how we can do it so like you created an enemy you can create a player as well right player might have some x coordinate let's say that is uh, 100 Some y coordinate, let's say one fifty. Width and height layer same. Speed is fine. Maybe color is blue. Okay. Uh, we call it as player. Let us create a player inside the draw image method. So maybe I can say uh, instead of uh, drawing the enemy, draw the player. this is this is our player okay so i want it to be in the maybe middle of the game so i can uh, change the initialization to something else which is maybe 400 or 450 so not not like this 100 and 450 maybe like this so it is somewhere here okay i want this player to move right i want this player to move so what i can do is now i have to listen for input right i have to listen for input so how do we listen for input uh shouldn't we fill different different object for a player yes you can we will create a player image okay maybe you can say uh, var player image that is new image and uh, player image dot src this is assets dot let's say this image okay so inside your game uh okay we are in this file right uh index.html uh, game.html sorry index.html yes so instead of saying fill rectangle we can say draw image and we can say player uh, player image okay we got some error let's see what the error would might be color is not needed ignore it we don't need this property for player okay so here we have to give pika dot png so we have given the player image as well right okay so we we do have the player as well so right now the player does not move i want this player to move uh, with the arrow keys okay i want this player to move using arrow keys right so how how do we do it so let's see how do we do it right so maybe i i am not liking the speed of the enemy so i want to just increase it so i will increase the speed to 15 and it will just go go quite bit fast okay or maybe make it 10 it's too fast 
So now I want to read keyboard inputs. So we have something which is known as event listener. Okay. So we have to register an event with the So right now uh, I'm just going to make it very simple. I will uh, move it on the mouse click and when mouse is released, the player will stop. Okay. So what we will do, we will initialize, we will create event listeners. These event listeners, they don't need to be a part of the loop. They will automatically see when, when an input is there, they will uh, detect the event and they will perform some action. Okay. They will detect some event like mouse press or key down okay, and trigger some code. Let's see how we, we can do it. So we have to say canvas dot add event listener. And what we are going to do, we are going to say, uh, what is the event that is mouse down, right? And maybe we can say some function that we want to execute. Okay. So I'm creating an anonymous function which says, okay, uh, console dot log. You pressed mouse, maybe mouse got clicked. I'll create two events. So mouse got released. You released the mouse, right? Uh, so mouse up, I, I think it does. Right? So now if I run this code, go to inspect, I go to console. So if I click my mouse, it says mouse got clicked. So if I now I'm going to release it, see, so it says mouse got released. Okay. So the mouse is actually getting released, right? Okay. So we, we have created the uh, event listener. Okay. Now we don't want uh, to print this. We actually want to move the player, right? So what, what should we do? Maybe I can set the state of the player. Okay. Maybe, uh, is the uh, player moving? So I can say by default, it is not moving and player does have its own speed. Let's say the speed is five. So when the mouse gets clicked, I can say, uh, the player is in moving state. So is moving is equal to true, but what is this variable? It is actually player is moving, right? Otherwise I can set player dot is moving equal to false. And inside the draw function, I can check if, uh, sorry, inside the update function, I can check if player is in moving state, I will in increment the, uh, X coordinate of the player. So I can say player dot X plus equals to player dot speed. Okay. So if I now go and run this code, if I click the mouse, the player gets into a moving state. Okay. Is it okay now getting the thing? So even listener changes the state of the player and the update function checks the state of the player and updates the coordinate of the player. Yes or no? Like this. Okay. So I can press and release and I can play with the player. Okay. What, what should be the next step? What should be the next step? So next step might be to detect the collisions, right? So we, we might need to check if, if the two objects are colliding or not. So maybe we can create some helper function to check collisions, right? Reversal of the player. Uh, so you, you have to put arrow keys as events if you want to go back in that direction. Okay. So the event for arrow key is actually key down. So maybe I can just tell you key down and maybe you, you pressed some key.
let me just uh, see maybe i'll just do it later on but right now i'm just skipping this part okay yes <laughs> so now what we were trying to do we were uh, trying to check build a helper function to check a collision okay so maybe we can create a function that checks is there a collision is there any collision okay. now what you can do you are actually getting two objects which is like a player and a an enemy right or they are simply uh, object 1 and object 2 ob1 and ob2 so you are actually getting two objects and you want to check if they are colliding or not okay so here you need to put logic for collision detection so how do we detect collision between two rectangles okay so right now we are not doing a pixel perfect collision detection we are simply doing a very simple uh, collision detection where we are checking whether the two rectangles they do overlap or they don't overlap okay so let me just tell you right yes yes you can put a switch key key uh, you can put a switch key as kind of a stuff for uh, checking what what key is there detected so now let's say i have a rectangle one and i have another rectangle so they can collide if the let's say this is the x comma x1 comma y1 and this is x2 comma y2 okay so if the difference between x x1 minus x2 if this difference is let's say less than equal to uh, the width of the rectangle that is 100 and also so this may also happen that this distance is less than 100 that is the width of the rectangle but we also want that the difference between the y coordinates that also should be less than 100 okay so y1 minus y2 this also should be less than equal to 100 so if the, both of these conditions are true then it means a collision is going to happen right so what i can do is i can check i can check the first condition that is uh where first condition that is uh, object 1 dot x minus object 2 dot x the absolute value of this is math dot abs if this is less than equal to the uh, width that is object 1 dot width which is 100 in our case and second condition is math dot absolute value of object 1 dot y minus object 2 dot y if this is less than equal to object 1 dot height So if both of the conditions are true you can say there is a collision otherwise you return false right so now what i can check inside the update method i can check if is colliding player and the enemy then maybe you can say set game over to true so you can call game over equal to true and maybe in the beginning we can say where game over equal to false so game is not over and when the game is over what we want to do we want to throw a box alert box which tells that the game is over and we want to stop this uh, rendering loop as well okay so what i can do is i will Uh, call the next frame only if the game is not over so if game is over uh i can say alert game over else draw the game something like this
alert throws a box where uh, where it shows the game is over okay so now we got an error is colliding is not defined so let us check is colliding so what function did we create okay we created as any collision so we, let's call it as is colliding now if i stand here so there there was an overlap and the game of game is over okay the game is over so now that is how you handle the case of game over and maybe if you reach the end of the game okay you can say game over is true and you you are going to win so inside the update function so i'm not going to draw the treasure you can do it uh, on your own as well so what i can do is if this player reaches the end that is maybe some threshold so inside the update if player dot x coordinate crosses maybe the game width game width minus player dot width right then also you can say uh, game over that is equal to true and maybe you say alert you won and maybe uh, in this case i can throw a alert box here itself you lost okay and i can remove the alert box from here uh i can say if game over is if game is not over if game over is false then keep on drawing the game right so let's try to uh go ahead and say it says you won the game and if i go here and maybe if i stop in the middle it says you lost the game right so now this is uh, this completes our basic game and maybe you can add additional functionality like more enemies add the treasure add a background image add a functionality for scoring which is based upon the x coordinate of the player so a lot of things you can do and i hope uh you understood the flow of the game okay so any doubts in this one why canvas hangs when we exceed some specific number of elements in the canvas right so if you have a lot of objects uh, and uh, it it may get hanged okay so basically um your memory utilization is getting higher and it it might hang right so try to reduce the size of images that will help try to add optimizations in your code that can help right so now did you understand the flow so we had a function render which actually uh, repeats our game loop again and again so we just uh, put it inside a function called render and this thing is running again and again and before that we have done the initialization of the objects we came out of the loop using a, a boolean variable called game over and in the update we put all the logic that updates the state of the players and in draw we put all the logic which draws the objects on the screen okay and this we did it for like a lot of time and this actually creates a basic game and you can see we have not used any hi-fi concepts it's just simple basic programming fundamentals that you are learning in your first or second semester in your college okay so i hope you enjoyed this session and i will share the code with you at the same link so github.com/codingminutes you can go here in the repositories you find game 101 and here we will update the entire code for this particular game right all right uh, maybe over to the organizers and if you're interested you can also uh, explore some of my courses at coding minutes if you want to learn programming fundamentals you can join this free course if you want to learn c++ go ahead with this course if you want to do ds go with this course if you want to prepare for interviews go for this course if you want to go for cp go with this course okay so all courses they are uh, at pizza price and they come with lifetime access okay okay sir that was a really great session like
this topic that was i'm actually this thing i'm actually doing it myself for the first time okay yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm doing and this so, workshop uh, like after two, three years, and I had not brushed up, but I hope uh, till I go got to deliver the content. <laughs> it was very good, sir. We learned a lot today. Great, great, great. And sir, so especially your tagline: "Course is in less than the price of a pizza." That's like really attractive <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So once you do the courses, get a job, then eat as many pizzas as you want. Okay, so learn coding the pocket friendly way. <laughs> Yes, sir. Sure. So, no. sir, like after the workshop, we have some questions for you, like a normal yeah. interactive one questions from our audience, and I would like if they would ask them in the chat box. Yeah. So we have first question. Noticing your amazing portfolio, we can witness that you have a creative and interactive approach towards your audience. How do you implement the same in other fields that you work on? Uh, right, right. So, uh, good question. uh basically uh like lot of your software engineering it does involve lot of creativity there are many ways to solve the same problem so like once you, once you have multiple ideas you can always discuss with your team and find the like which idea is better what are the pros and cons so no approach is the best every approach comes with a trade off so yeah so you um so at google i did work on multiple like projects mostly they were in, in front end and some part was in back end as well so we used to have these discussions okay what is the best way to implement this design or this this widget and uh, yeah <laughs> okay so ashmit asks what is the mindset of mindset of an entrepreneur while learning new skills and accepting previous mistakes what personality makes you an entrepreneur increase the probability of their success right right so uh, like from my experience is that uh, it success does not come in one shot uh, you have to go through a lot of struggle and failures and then there are learnings which tell you this is the right thing that you are doing this is the wrong thing that you are doing right so uh, like one issue i faced uh, was to scale up my online courses earlier at my previous startup then i thought okay what are the barriers and how we can help the community so i thought of okay, okay let's not invest on tech because investing a lot on tech increases your running costs so i did explored another option that is udemy and that actually uh, solved my problem so udemy is handling the scale and it is also reducing my tech cost so i went with udemy as another option okay so like it was a learning for me that uh building your own platform it does make a, make a lot of sense but there are a lot of other things you have to manage to like funds and a big team so i'm just giving one example that in my case during covid time the learning was that people want affordable courses so i tried to do something different during that uh, time like so and uh, yeah okay so <laughs> to learn from the failures build a great team uh and like having good co-founders that is very helpful and uh, do not think of startup as a backup plan uh, if you want to do it uh, give uh, give your full energy to it okay so just don't do it as a side activity if if you want to go as, go for a startup put your full energy into it yeah. and also look at like uh, market viability of your ideas okay do some surveys before you jump full fledge into building an idea also do some market research so, product that i am building are there people who are willing to pay pay for it is there a good uh, target audience okay okay so so like before doing a startup we should gain a little bit experience in our market right so like uh, for most of you i would still recommend that uh, you should go for a job in your uh, after graduate graduating out unless you are very sure and very confident or maybe you got some seed funding through your college or something so jobs do they help in getting a lot of corporate experience and how things work in like different domains so st starting your career with a job is a very good choice so my in my case it was a unconventional choice but there were the circumstances were also unconventional okay so luckily i got a chance to start my journey as a startup co-founder not as a corporate employee which i did join google later uh, in 2019 
but yes so both the things they have their own pros and cons uh, but i personally like working in a startup environment more than working in a corporate so it's again a personal preference yes sir so basically then we have to put in efforts daily small efforts and uh, it's not, as you said it's not going going to be a one shot success is never one uh, you do not get success in one shot right. so uh, that we got uh, so moving on to a last question for the session abhimanyu uh, it's from abhishek ki you have been in programming for a quite long time so with your experience explain is the competitive programming really worth it uh see it's worth it if you enjoy doing it i personally don't enjoy doing it a lot uh so i did it uh, like during my college time but you see i don't have much activity on code forces and other com- other platforms as well but uh, what i did was i did cover a breadth of topics if someone asked me what is a segmentary i know what it is where it is applied uh but in in day to day use you don't really use it a lot so at max you would be working with arrays or hash tables and talking about dp recurrences they are very uncommon in your day to day software developer life cycle but no, knowing those good uh, uh, things makes you a good developer but you might not be using it daily right so it's more like sharpening the knife but now you're not using that sharpened knife you're just using your regular knife to cut the fruits right it's like that only uh, so do it uh, if you like doing it otherwise uh, go with the basic fundamentals like i showed you my courses also so i have two courses dsa algorithms uh, dsa essentials and dsa for coding interviews so if you look at the curriculum that curriculum is good enough for most product companies if you just want to clear a dsa interview and get a good hold on data structures that is enough deep is for the passionate people only right okay sir so sir i think I'm... it was a uh, uh, nice meeting you sir i think it's it was the right question to end the session on thank you for uh, coming yeah, one last question by sejal we can take uh, okay uh, so there is always a demand for learning new languages and modules yes of course this is part of uh, your job and if you don't get to learn anything new you will get bored very soon so it's good new things keep coming in and you have to learn it as you work in like lot of projects okay so just make your fundamentals very good while in college and don't worry about any frameworks that you learn on the go when the project comes okay so thank you sir so like according so due to the time constraint i guess that is it for the youtube live session and now astha thank you sir thank you for joining us today it was a really insightful session we all learned a lot of new things and uh, thank you for taking out time and joining us today and as for the audience uh, please stay tuned as there is less than 24 hours left for electrothon 4.0 and thank you uh, you all were like great audience today thank you everyone thank you so much everyone